What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to our channel, guys. I'm Rod. I'm here with my dad. Rod Sr. And we are Bridging, Bridging the, the Gap. Gap. Yes, sir. The boys is back with another fire reaction video for you. If you like our reaction videos, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Also, drop a comment. Let us know what we should react to next. And turn on your post notifications to make sure you're notified every single time that we drop a new video. All right. So today, Dad, um, we are going to be listening to another J. Cole album. Um... You like J. Cole, right? Yeah, we, I like J. Cole. We uh, listened to his uh, critically acclaimed, probably his most famous album, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. Uh, it's a great album. Uh, you enjoyed that. I enjoyed that album quite a bit. Uh, we're going to listen today to his uh, third studio album. Uh, no, his fourth studio album, and it's titled For Your Eyes Only. Uh, so this album is somewhat of a concept album and it's basically like um his his homie got killed and he basically wrote this album as like a letter to his homie's daughter in the perspective of his homie oh okay so i don't know it's <laughs> It's a really uh, serious, it's a m much more serious album. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a came from a real personal place. So, okay. It's, uh, it's a good, it's a great album. And, um, yeah, wanted to play it for you today. Okay. So, um, we will go ahead and get into it. Let me see if there's any other information behind it. Uh, this is fourth studio album. It was released December 9, 2016 by Dreamville Records, Rock Nation, and Interscope. The album was Cole's first release with Interscope. His previous albums were released by Columbia Records. Mm. Uh, it was released exactly two years after Cole's previous studio album, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. Um, the album had a couple singles. I don't want to read. Wasn't Gotti, Gotti with uh, Columbia for a minute? Irv Gotti? Yeah. Um, I don't know where Murder, Inc. was distributed out of. I, uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but let me see. I want to kind of see if there's anything else about like the... Yeah, so uh, lyrically, the album follows the story of a young man he, as he goes from selling crack to falling in love and starting a family. And the final track, it reveals that he has died. And almost the entire um, album is a tape he created for his daughter to listen to after he's gone. So that might have been a spoiler, but whatever. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody's roots started out as selling crack. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's... um. I guess a pretty prerequisite to being a rapper. <laughs> well, I think it's just a twelve a story that that is um, that lives in in the neighborhoods that yeah that these guys come from. That's quite where often. That's where everybody out there trying to get get famous and uh, uh, get on top, so they can leave that stuff behind them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, with that in mind, that's the that's the concept of this album. I guess I, maybe I shouldn't have explain that maybe seeing if you you caught that on your own but that's the concept of the album and like the very first time i heard it it was mm -hmm. like piecing it together and then at the very end it like kind of reveals that that's what it is so i guess that probably did kind of ruin it <laughs> <laughs> but here we are let's go and here we go so the first track is uh for whom the bell tolls produced by elijah scarlett and j cole that's a book yeah <clears throat> Here we go. Praying and hoping for something. I know I'm going to see it. I know that it's coming, Lord. Huh. Lord. Mm -hmm. huh. But what do you do when there's no place to turn? I have no one, I'm lonely, my bridges have burnt down, love, love. The bell's wow. getting loud, ain't nowhere to hide, got nowhere to go, put away my pride, tired of feeling low, even when I'm high, ain't no way to live, do I want to die, I don't know. Such a rich sound. Yeah.
I see the rain pouring down. Sounds like Satchmo. All right, that's from Who the Bell Tolls. What'd you think about that one, Dad? Love the trumpets. Love the whole arrangement. Now, again, I will say it again. It was such a rich sound, a jazzy, sultry kind of. It was a, it was a very quality song. Yeah, I, I, I really like this song too. Um, and especially knowing the concept of the album. <clears throat> You kind of get the feeling of the despair of the character that he's portraying and like the pain. Um, his voice even kind of cracks a little bit when he's yeah. singing and stuff. And it's, uh, he's just really putting you in that mindset mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, to start the album. I so, agree. all right, cool. We'll go ahead and roll into the next track. Uh, this is track number two and it's titled Immortal. And this is produced by J. Cole. Uh, Ginge and Cardiac and here we go Immortal alright Now I was barely 17 with a pocket full of hope, screaming dollar in a dream with my closet looking broke and my niggas looking clean, getting caught up with that dope. Have you ever served a fiend with a pocket full of soap or car time vibe? Summer rain come again, I'm the pain cause it's hard for a felon. In my mind I've been crying, know it's wrong but I'm selling eyes, swelling up with tears, thinking about my niggas dead in the dirt, immortalized on the shirt. Real niggas don't die, fall with the plot, 1745, form at the plot, real niggas don't die, form on the plot. Girl, nigga, don't lie, form in the plot yeah, Nope, all I see is that cream, nigga, that green I'm a black king, black jeans, I'm a black queen And her ass fat, too fat for a flat screen I'm the type of nigga make the whole fucking trap lean King Pin, nigga, put wings on a crack fiend If they want a nigga, they gon' have to send a SWAT team And I'm going out like Scarface in this last scene of legend What that mean? Real niggas don't die. Fall with the plot. One seven forty five. Form at the plot. Real niggas don't die. Form on the plot. Girl, niggas don't lie. Form in the plot. My niggas don't die. Form on the plot. Real niggas don't like die. Yeah. Form on the plot. Real niggas don't die. Real niggas don't die. Take me. I know nobody meant to live forever anyway And so I hustle like my niggas in Virginia They tell a nigga sell dope rapper go to NBA In that order, it's that sort of thinking That been keeping niggas chained at the bottom and hang The strangest fruit that you ever seen mm. Right with pain, listen Strange fruit Alright, that's track number two, Immortal What do you think about that one, Dad? I enjoyed the hook on that yeah, nigga, don't die. And then that nice little beat to it, man. And then he just, he, J. Cole, man, I, I liked him from the start. Mm-hmm. And then this right here, you know, from this so far from what I heard, I like this better than the other J. Cole you, you uh, played for me. Yeah, I think this album is, um, it might be my favorite J. Cole album. Not maybe necessarily to listen to, but just, I think it's his best album just because it's such a, a deep uh, concept. Mm-hmm. Like to write the whole album from a from the perspective of somebody else, and to like put himself in like his his guy's shoes and and tell his story mm-hmm. to his daughter and stuff. Like it's just like it's really amazing to to be able to do that. I like the music and and to me I like the the speed of this. Uh, of this album, the, the the rhythm of it, the flow of it, mm-hmm. that's what that's what I I'm enjoying the most out of these first two songs. Yeah, that's the flow, and uh, I don't know. He's and he, you know I like his voice. I've always told told you when I first heard him, I said, man, his voice is like really nice. So I like it. it and that hook, man, real niggas don't die. And then that instruments that was playing in the back mm-hmm. background while he was going through that whole chorus, man, it was that was nice to me. <laughs> cool. <coughs> <coughs> All right, we'll go Excuse ahead and uh, roll into the next track. This is titled Deja Vu. Deja Vu. Mm-hmm. And this is produced by Ron Gilmore, J. Cole, uh, Vellis, Boy Wonder, and Vinyls. Uh, so we actually have heard from Boy Wanda. 
he produced a lot of uh, Jake, uh, Drake's album that we listened mm. to before. Mm-hmm. The name looks for me. I remember that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, here is Deja Vu. Deja Vu. Hey, put a finger in the sky if you want it, nigga. Hey, put two fingers in the sky if you want it. Hey, put a finger in the sky if you want it, nigga. Hey, put two fingers in the sky if you want it. Hey, put a finger in the sky if you want it, nigga. Hey, put two fingers in the sky if you want it. Sight shit to keep it real. I don't know whether I believe it's true, but if it is, then tell me if I'm wrong or right. If I fell in love with you before I ever even knew, I catch your eye and look away as if it never happened. At times, I feel as though I'm caught up in a strange dream. If I could talk, then minds would tell you that I'm feeling you. Sometimes I swear your eyes be telling me the same thing. She fuck with small town niggas, I got bigger dreams. Bigger dream. She fuck with small town niggas, I got bigger dreams. Bigger dream. Listen, she fuck with small town niggas. I got bigger dreams. Bigger dreams. Hmm. That's not good. She fuck with small town hmm. niggas. I got bigger dreams. Bigger dreams. Listen. Club jumping don't stop off top, but you know we only go to two o'clock. Put your motherfucking hood up. It's the weekend. Drop that back up. Want it? No question, I know destiny well And know I sin the Lord blessing me still Every saint got a past, every sinner got a future Every loser got a win and every winner got to lose so no. They say it's just a matter of time And if I had my way then you would be mine She fuck with small town niggas, I got bigger drink bigger drink. Yeah. She fuck with small town niggas, I got bigger drink bigger drink. Yeah. I can see the promised land I can't do no promises. I know you were made for me, but darling, don't you wait for me. Cause I can see the promise land, but I can't do no promise. Hey, put a finger in the sky if you want it, nigga. Hey, put two fingers in the sky if you want it. Hey, put a finger in the sky if you want it, nigga. Hey, put two fingers in the sky if you want it. Hey, put a finger. All right, that is Deja Vu, track number three. What'd you think about that one, Dad? The thing I noticed about him again was that when he's rapping, um, he tells a story so well. You know what I mean? For sure. And then he puts it to to a rap, mm. and it just comes alive. Yeah, I enjoy that song. I enjoy that, that, that little background voice or whatever it was. I don't know what you call that. Mm. But um, the whole, inst- again, his his music uh the production that's always sounds a little rich and sort of like jazzy sounding mm-hmm. uh but then it still has that kind of like hip hop sound to it too because those lower bass tones mm-hmm. and he has that snare in there he he sprinkles all through the songs and stuff like that it still gives it that hip hop feel to it but it's like a hip hop jazzy kind of it's just nice yeah it's good to listen to. It's easy on the ears. Mm-hmm. And then when you listen to the words, it's even more enriching because he's talking some deep stuff, man, you know, always. For sure. Yeah, so, um, yeah, he like you said, he, he tells a story so well, so he's kind of started the album off with kind of like letting you know this, the character's like mindset. Then the second song is kind of like letting you know um, what – that character is doing you know real niggas don't die he's he's out here he's serving he's Mm -hmm. selling drugs he's in the streets and then in this song he paints the picture of um this character meeting a woman that he's um falling in love with in the club and he's like out in the streets you know he's in the club he meets this girl he wants to get at her he talks to her he gets her number and stuff and he's just yeah he just tells the story so so well (laughs) Uh, and it's just going to continue to unfold throughout the album. So, cool. um, yeah, we'll go ahead and move into the next song. Like, oh, we got some uh, annotations. So, on Deja Vu, Cole raps from the perspective of his deceased friend, James McMillan Jr., who imagines a conversation with a woman about the kind of men she gravitates toward. He believes that he can unseat those guys if, he, if she would just give him a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Um, here we go with the next track, which is titled Ville Mentality. And on this one, we'll kind of read. Hmm. I'm just going to it. 
So next track, yeah, Vil Mentality, and this one is produced by J. Cole, Elite, and Ron Gilmore. Like you just walked into a smoky real field room with a mad jazz. Uh, you know where they had those poets, mm -hmm. where they stand up and they recite poetry. That's tight. Tribulations I'm facing in this age of information. I hate this shit. Call it escaping. Start a new life in a foreign location. Similar to my niggas ducking cases. Can't take the possible time that it faces. How long can I survive this Play me never, give up my chain never, give up my pride never, show my pain never, dirt on my name. Can I survive with this mentality? Mm. How long can I survive with this mentality? Oh. <laughs> All right, that's track number four, Ville Mentality. What do you think about that one, Dad? It's like, um, <clears throat> yeah, putting up a, a facade or, or um, you know, you, you don't show your real self. You know, you kind of like, um, from what I got from it, you you putting up a front uh, to say, you know, you don't want to see people see your pain. You don't want to see the real you. You got to put up a different image for the outside people. And with, I don't know how, what, what confused me here on this song was then, you know, he's talking about that. You know, he's been in the hood. He don't want to give up his chain. He don't want to show him, show pain. But then, uh, then this little girl's talking about her dad got shot, and uh, she goes through these, um, I guess, down feelings. And when she does, she argues with her mom, and then she goes to her room and slams the door. She shouts out, "I wish my dad was here!" You know, probably in in an attempt to make her mom feel guilty or hurt her mom by saying that to her. Mm -hmm. You know, but. Um, I couldn't see how they the correlation was as far as him saving face in the hood and this little girl going through some changes about missing her dad. I couldn't I couldn't understand the correlation there. Well, I think if you kind of listen to the hook right here, um, how can I survive with this mentality? And the whole theme of, of the album is uh, this character. Is that the little girl? No, I think how can I survive with this mentality is the dad. Uh, okay, that's the dad. He's saying, how can I survive with this mentality? And the, the Ville mentality, um, the title of the song, Ville, being mm -hmm. Fayetteville, mm -hmm. the city that they're from. Yeah, he's just kind of saying, you know, how can how long can I go around puffing up my chest and acting tough and being in the streets and doing these things? Um, and then it cuts into the girl who tells the story of her dad getting shot and killed because his friend set him up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just, that's how they tie in together. It's like, he's saying, how long can I survive? Fast forward, he's not here anymore. And he's left his daughter behind. Right. And she's dealing with the consequences she, yeah, of that. Okay, okay, I got you. That's kind of how I how I take it. It's deep, I tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. And the music, man, was phenomenal in this song, man. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. For sure. Um, and what, what's the name of this album again? This is called For Your Eyes Only. For Your Eyes Only. 
Definitely. Yeah. And then so I think it also ties in too because we just had the Deja Vu song where he, mm-hmm. the guy, he meets his his girl. Mm-hmm. And then in the fourth song, he's saying, how long can I survive with, with this mentality? And then they're slicing in those clips of the little girl. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like he's met the girl, they've had a child, and now he's dealing with the consequences she's dealing with the consequences of the the father passing away so all right so we will go ahead and roll into the next track which is track number five it's titled she's mine part one she's mine part one where's part two at then you got no part two on the album that's track nine Mm. you didn't say part two um so part one is produced by Elite, Ron Gilmore, Shargo, De- Deputy, and J. Cole. Deputy, that's my boy. You never heard of Deputy. <laughs> 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 All right, so he's going to continue um, narrating this album from his friend James McMillan. <laughs> and um, this one is uh, focused on a special lady in his life. It's what? Focus on a special lady in his life. Okay. So she's mine, part one. All righty. Mm-hmm. Looks like it's starting off like a Stevie Wonder song. Or something. I never felt so alive. Mm. I never felt so alive. I never felt so alive. I never felt so alive. Mm. Cause now you're here and I just wanna be right by your side. On any night that you'll be crying, baby, I'll dry your eyes. I'll dry your eyes. Every time you go to sleep, you look like you in heaven. Plus the head game is stronger than a few, etc. Mm. You shine just like the patent leather on my new 11s. You read me like a book, like I'm the Bible, you the reverend. Yeah. I want to tell the truth to you. I want to talk about my days as a Better than I know myself. Well, how about that? Mm. She gets him. You get me. She hugs him. You kiss me. You tell me you miss me, and I believe you. I believe you. She gets him. You get me. She hugs him. You kiss me. You tell me you miss me, and I believe. She's mine, part one. What do you think about that one, Dad? It sounds like this song sounded like I was watching a movie, like this love mu- movie, and it's like a a, a real intimate, soft, uh, intimate scene where maybe they was having a candlelight dinner or something, and they was kind of like giving each other little hugs and kisses, you know, stuff like that. You know, that's that, that's the kind of vibe it gave off to me when when this song was playing, mm-hmm. but. Um, and those the violins and uh, uh, that voice. What's the thing? I always forget. What's the name of that thing? The, the, the voice that they do with the. Mm, I don't think uh, there this was, was a voiceover. Was more like yeah. It like wasn't no me. auto tune on that one. <coughs> okay, there was. <clears throat> pardon me. Okay, there was an auto tune. So I guess it was voiceover. Yeah, it was just kind of like background vocals and stuff. That was real. It was really nice. The blend that he how he did that mm-hmm. and. Uh, it was just a real, uh, real touching song to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think this whole album is just really personal and deeply like meaningful. Um, like I said, he's he's talking in the perspective of his friend that passed away, so he's mm-hmm. expressing the love between him and his and his woman in this song and how they met and how he feels like she knows him better than himself, and she mm-hmm. she's giving him a reason to want to live because on the other song he's like you know how long can I survive with this mentality and yeah he sounded like he was just giving up yeah at that point and now he's just like she's um 
giving him a reason mm-hmm. to live. Exactly. You know, she's just like, and he wants to express all his inner feelings to her, but he told her, he braced her. He said, like, you know, this might not, you know, this that not going to, you're not going to learn me overnight, you know. This yeah. is going to take some years because, you know, this is a lot to unravel. For sure. You know, so. Yeah, and I mean, there's just like some really uh, cool lines in here. <laughs> uh, every time you sleep, Every time you go to sleep, you look like you in heaven. Plus, the head game is stronger than a few exceptions. You know, that was the one that's point I did. I call it real. Yeah, that that one one that one that stood out to me. Yeah, yeah. and, but and then, I liked it what she said about uh, you read me uh, like I'm the Bible, uh, you the reverend. reverend. Yeah, yeah, it's just like really, it's really sweet. It's really yeah. sweet and uh, heartwarming. Like the way he talks about this woman and. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then he even gets even deeper. He's, he's exposing you to all my demons and the reasons that I'm this way. He wants to talk about his days as a youth. You know, he wants to paint a picture, but it'll take more than a day, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just real deep, <laughs> real good stuff. Yeah, all right. Uh, so we'll go ahead and roll into the next track. This track is titled Change. This is track number six. And uh, this one is produced by Ron Gilmore, Elite, and J. Cole. And so um, I think, man, the character development in this album. So it starts off, he's like, he's in the streets, he's doing all this stuff. And then he meets the girl, and now he's like becoming more mature. And I think this is kind of like the the mature version of this character here on this song. So okay. And what's this called? This is called Change. Change, okay. Which is cool because it's like right in the middle of the album. So it's like... Okay, uh, yeah. You know what right I mean? So this is where I change, you mm-hmm. know? So mm-hmm. here we go. Change. Now, this album is really well put together. And like listening to it now and like breaking it down is like giving me a whole new... A whole new perspective. Appreciation huh? for it, for sure. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, track number six, Change. My intuition is telling me there'll be better days. My intuition is telling me there'll be better days. Fears alleviate, my tears evaporate, my faith don't deviate, ideas don't have a date. But see, I'm growing and getting stronger with every breath, bringing me closer to heaven's doors with every step. As we speak, I'm at peace, no longer scared to die. Yeah. Most niggas don't believe in God, and so they terrify. It's either that or they be fearing they gon' go to hell. Every desperate for a change, let the pen glide. But the only real That's change nice. come from inside. But the only real change come from yeah. inside. But the only real change come from the cemeteries unchanged. I see men cry. Mm. But the only real change come from inside. But the only real change come from inside. But the only yeah. real change come from inside. Chosen religion, Jesus peace, frozen from sinning. Doing dirt, hoping to God, he know my intentions. To see a million before I see a casket. I got a baby on the way, no he gon' be a bastard. I'm living fast mm. like I'm in a drag race. How that cash taste? When I was a senior, I was falling <laughs> on my drag race. Out the Niggas gas, put gas, the bullets in my car when hit the gas tank. Yeah. No, I got an angel, cause I'm supposed to have a halo right now. My yep. lifestyle destined for a federal that's facility right. for my ability to make the oh, birds fly. Right. Fiends won't get higher than a bird's eye. Fiends come from inside, but the only real change come from inside. The inside. But the only real change come from inside. <laughs> Go son, got a new gun. This one don't run out of ammo. Lately been working on my handles. Can I ball? Become a star and remain myself. If I fall, dust it off and regain myself. That's right. Fuck them all. They don't know all yeah. the pain I felt. I'm in awe. After all the fame I felt, I evolve. I no longer bury demons. I be a vessel for the truth until I'm barely breathing. I'm feeling singing. this song right here, boy. Yeah. Life is all about the <laughs> I reminisce back to a time when niggas threw their hands. All of a sudden, niggas popping truck and then we scram. Finger on trigger, make a little nigga understand what it's like to finally be the motherfucking man. Eyes wide, that's from the power that the coward feels. Niggas die for bitches disrespecting dollar bills. Blood shed, turn the city to a battlefield. I call it poison, you call it real. That's how you feel. Pistols be popping and niggas dropping a heartbeat. Scattered like roaches, a body laid on the concrete. Body laid on the concrete. Look, somebody. All right, that is track number six. Change. What do you think about that one, Dad? I very, very, so much enjoyed that. Um, that song. It um, made me think good things. So, um, 
in the beginning with this song, um, it kind of reminded me of like he's waking up, he looks outside or he's outside and the sky is opening up, the sun is shining and it's a new dawn, it's a new day. And mm-hmm. he's kind of like in this, you know, kind of joyful mood. And then, you know, then he starts talking about uh, the things in life that came at him and things like that. And then the uh, the bad news of his friend that was only 22 mm-hmm. that was shot. And then it kind of, the I guess, the it kind of slows you down from that melancholy kind of feeling that it gave you in the beginning and it kind of slows you down and brings you into uh, another reality and it gets real soft and it gets real solemn and it gets serious and he, you know and then it talks about his friend and then he's 22 and another life loss we got to do better blah 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 and then he just settles you down into that and then they go into the, to the ceremony of the uh, young man that was gunned down. And uh, it was kind of gave you a real solemn feeling at the end, you know, kind of peaceful, mm-hmm. calm, you know, but also sad yeah. at the same time. And this song was very, very well put together. Yeah, I think this is one of my favorite songs off of this album. Yeah. The hook on here, it was a bunch of them in there where he was just. He just kept, man, that was a really nice song. Uh, this one here, the pin glide, uh, that chorus there. Only real change comes from inside. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that whole chorus there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In cemeteries or in chains, I see men cry, but the only real change comes from inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, this is uh, definitely just him carrying on that story and uh, telling his story. Um, I think the first verse is coming from his friend's uh, perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, you know, he's getting stronger and growing with every breath, bringing me closer to heaven's doors with every step. And he's he's at peace. He's not scared to die. He's mm-hmm. uh, He believes in God, so he's not terrified and all of that stuff. And then um, kind of continues with that into the second verse. He's, he says, he's got a baby on the way. He's living fast like I'm in a drag race. Had a cash taste. Uh, was balling on my classmates. He was talking about kind of the stuff he's been through. He's mm-hmm. been in a drive through and one hit the gas tank. And I know an angel got me because I'm supposed to have a halo. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And he's, you know, he's gone through all of that. And then, you know, finally meets his demise. And then J. Cole kind of breaks down, you know, how that's affecting him and kind of just the stuff he sees in his neighborhood. And, um, yeah, it's man, it's a sad story, but yeah. it, but he tells it well. All right, so we'll go ahead and move into the next track. Uh, this is track number seven. It's titled "Neighbors." Oh, what did you think about the uh, female vocals on this song? They're outstanding. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's an artist by the name of Ari Lennox. She's uh, signed to J. Cole's Dreamville label. Oh, okay. And she's fantastic. She has a lot of great songs. Must be if he signed her. Yeah, for sure. This guy. I mean, he doesn't. He he's so such a class act. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything seems like he just he's a cut above. Does everything you yeah. know, that way. Mm-hmm. So for him to sign her, I can't even imagine what her mu- her music sounds like. She's really dope. She's very <laughs> very dope. She's and got a beautiful name? voice. Ari Lennox. The, she. I'm pretty sure she's already had. She already has an album then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's got. Heard her, it. She's got a couple. Yeah. Um, her her album uh, Shea Butter Baby is uh, one of my favorite uh, R and B albums. She's she's really good. Shea Butter Baby. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and move into the next track. This is track number seven. It's titled Neighbors, and it's produced by Elite and J Cole. Neighbors. Yep. And so um, <laughs> this is actually um, this song draws inspiration from an incident that happened involving uh, a house that Cole was renting. Uh, in North Carolina mm-hmm. to use as a studio. The house was raided by a SWAT team after complaints from neighbors who assumed that the house was being used to produce and sell drugs. No narcotics were found. Uh, the, so basically they, they, they were recording in this studio mm-hmm. house and in a nice affluent neighborhood. And because there were black guys hanging out in the front, um, the neighbors thought that they were 
selling drugs. Really? So they called the police and the SWAT team ran up in there. A, a whole SWAT team? A whole SWAT team. <laughs> and they were just hanging out? They were just hanging out, making raps. Be damn. So here's track number seven, Neighbors. I was going to read this. I just want to talk to the man yeah, Speak for the boys in a bando And my nigga never walking again Apologize if I'm hopping again I know these things happen often But I'm back on the scene I was lost in a dream As I write this scene down in Austin I've been building me a house back home In the South Ma Won't believe what it's costing And it's fit for a king right Or a nigga that can sing And explain all the pain that it cost him My 16 should have came with a coffin Fuck the fame and the fortune wow. Well maybe not the fortune But one thing is for sure That the fame is exhausting That's why I moved away I needed privacy Surrounded by the trees in Ivy League Students that's recruited higher league mm. Thinking you do you and I do me I'm selling dope Neighbors uh, helped him make some more money. <laughs> yeah, dumbass. Neighbors think I'm selling dope, selling dope, selling dope, selling dope, selling dope. Motherfucker, some things you can't escape. Taxes and a rape. This society to make every nigga feel like a candidate. Don't follow me. Damn. This song pisses me off. Okay, the neighbors think I'm selling dope. Selling dope. I get dope. Well, motherfucker, I am. I am. I am. I am. Motherfucker, I am. Neighbors think I'm selling dope. I am. I am. I am. All right, that is neighbors. What'd you think about that one, Dad? I'm just mad that he's moving back to the south side. He should stay posted up where he was at. Shit. <laughs> and he said he was, though. That's the only bad part about it. But they didn't find none at the re- in the real life scenario, though. Mm-mm. So, anyway, he just said that just to piss somebody off, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the neighbors think I'm selling dope. I like that. It was a nice little hook to it and everything, man. That was a good song. Uh, J. Cole nailed this. He nailed this album. I ain't heard a bad song. It's, everything sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that song. It's a, it's, a, it's like turning a bad situation into a positive. Yep. And he, SWAT team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for sure. And he, uh, he's he got some real clever lines in here, too, um, just about the, uh, I guess, black man in a white man's world and yeah, but then he gonna move back to the south side. He gonna let them run him up out of there, man. That's what made me mad. I'm <laughs> like, man, I would have posted up. I put signs all up. Ah, y'all yeah, thought y'all got me. <laughs> Give me professional signs. Put up. Ah, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> I'll be wanting to antagonize some us, man. You know. So the neighbors think I'm selling dope, and I am, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and roll to the next song. This is track number eight. It's titled Folding Clothes. It's produced by Elite, Ron Gilmore, Steve Lacey, and J. Cole. J. Cole. Folding Clothes. Folding Clothes. Yeah. I, I know about that. <laughs> um, you, ever, you never been to the laundromat, have you? <laughs> yeah, I've been to the laundromat <laughs> plenty of times. Oh, boy. All right, here we go. Folding clothes. Uh oh. Hey, hey. Wants to fold clothes for her. I wonder how I can help. I get the basket and grab the clothes out the trap. Oh, hey, hey. Hey, hey. I want to do the right thing. <laughs> so much better than the wrong thing. I say I want 
like that harmony. <laughs> Mm. Acting tough so much we start to feel hard Live from the city where they pull cars I got a Glock 40 and a Lil 9 Ready for the day a nigga pull mine Niggas from the hood is the best actors Gotta learn to speak in ways that's unnatural Just to make it Alright, that is Folding Clothes What you think about that one, Dad? Yeah, that one it was a good song. I mean, he was talking about, you know, how he, you know, appreciate his girl or whatever. And, like, he's he knows this is little things that, you know, this, you know that he can do uh, that take stress off of her and make her have a good day, put a smile on her face. And he wants to do those things for her. Like, he wants to fold clothes. And then at the end, though, he started talking about he's peeping out the window and stuff. And, you know, he started talking, like, some hard stuff is going on, mm-hmm. you know, and that to me didn't tie into the song to me, unless I missed something here. Well, I think that so you know, from the perspective of the character um, that he's that he's talking through, um, you know, he's he's matured, he's he's changing, um, you know, and he's got a he's changing his mentality, he's focused on his woman and trying to make her life easier as she has done his. He's trying to do the simple things, but he still has to kind of look over his look over his shoulder, and he mm. still has these thoughts of you know he's got to like now he's trying to get out of the street, so he's got to go get a job, mm-hmm. and he's got to go to an interview mm-hmm. and talk different talk and different. wear his clothes different mm-hmm. than he's naturally doing. And I think that was just kind of one of those moments where yeah, he was folding clothes and helping around the house and stuff, but he still wakes up in the morning, looks out the window, and like those thoughts still yeah. linger in his mind. He's got to live like a double life. Right. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. So then he's got to try to fit into this world over here to 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 make a living, or try to get the job. And mm-hmm. He's got to still, he's living in the hood, so he got to hold up that kind of uh, um, uh, appearance. Right. As, you know, being look being hard mm-hmm. in, 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 in the hood. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. That's kind of what I took from that. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and then like, <laughs> a lot of people clown J. Cole for that song. Why? Because it's a fold- song about folding clothes. Folding clothes. But, I mean, if you look at it that way, then I guess. But it's like, no, but it's like, it's a, a guy that's maturing. And yeah, but it's not. It, you see, I think what the problem is, is uh, you got to look beyond, you know, just folding clothes. It's, and he, he's just saying he wants to do some of the simple things for her. Folding clothes is just one thing. Right. That he wants to do for her. You know, as far as simple things in life mm-hmm. that he wants to do to take stress off of her, to make her happy, to make her f- smile, to make her feel comfortable. Right. Folding clothes was just one part. Exactly. He could, you know, he could, he can add to the list cooking or do some what, dishes. Do, yeah, or, yeah, or whatever. Anything, yeah, you know, just spending so. time and and being thoughtful just, yeah, be, in different ways to to say that he loves 
his woman. Right, um, right. So yeah, I just think it was a it was a mature song. I it thought was, it was a great song. Yeah, I, I love that song, mm-hmm. and I I think the beat is fantastic. It is, isn't it? That bass line is funky, <laughs> and it's just it's just groovy, and it's mm-hmm. like it's just like it's something that you would put on while you're cleaning up the house, folding clothes. Well, I tell you one damn thing. I bet you nobody else could write a song about folding clothes and make and it make sound it, as damn that, good yeah, like right. that. <laughs> for sure, you know, folding clothes. I agree. You know, I want to clip your nails for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That boy, he, man, J. Kobe rocking it, man. He's bad. He's bad. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. We'll go ahead and get into track number nine. This is She's Mine, part two. Part two. All right. There's the part two you're looking for. Okay. Uh, this is produced by Elite, Ron Gilmore, Shargo, Deputy, and J. Cole. Uh, so here is She Mine. She's Mine. Catch me, don't you? Catch me, don't you? Catch me, I fall. For the first time, for you, I dropped the tough guy shit. On this bus, I sit thinking about you, thinking about you, thinking about you, thinking about you. Thinking about you, thinking about you, thinking about you, thinking about you. Damn it, feel good to have you. Damn it, feel good to have you. Oh, damn, damn it, feel good to have. We just swiping shit here. We don't love, we just liking shit here. What's that smell? Where's your diaper shit here? Lay on your back, don't pee right now, or else I have to get you back. One day when you gon' wanna get your way, yeah, I have fun with that. Reminisce when you came out the womb. Tears of joy, I think, filled up the room. You are now the reason that I fight. I ain't never did nothing this right in my whole life. Got me thinking, am I worthy of this gift? Night that you'll be crying, baby. I'll dry your eyes. Wow. I'll dry your eyes. There is a God. It is a God. Yeah, it is a guy. I never felt so alive. Dang. I never felt so alive. All right, that is She's Mine, part two. What'd you think about that one, Dad? Man, that was beautiful. <laughs> it was just beautiful. <laughs> Baby crying in the background. He said he ain't even gonna try to hold back the tears. He's feeling so much joy. He ain't even gonna try to fight it. Yeah. He's just overjoyed, overwhelmed mm-hmm. with love. You know, it's just <laughs> like uh, I just always love stuff about love anyway. Yeah. You know, so that uh, that song was jamming, man. Yeah. I loved it, man. Yeah. Yeah. He just, uh, oh, he was talking about Christmas and stuff. Uh, that, that got me right there. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, he got a point. You know, Christmas cheer and, you know, what it represents. Uh, you know, people go out, they spend all this money, you know, buying things for greedy corporations and, you know, especially on Black uh, Black Friday, Black Friday, you know, trying mm-hmm. to get a discount and you're buying all this stuff that you really don't really need. Or can afford. Uh, or can afford. So yeah, I mean, he talked. He touched on stuff like that. It's just a, uh, uh, I guess, a, a cycle or, or a mentality or a thought process that that parents and stuff go through when they have kids and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. but still, then they still do it because they want their kids to have you know the best. Uh, give them all they can give them, you know. So yeah. it's a, I, it's you know, but yeah, <laughs> he said, "Where's your diaper shit?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just loving all of that, man. Yeah. All of, the things that go with fatherhood, I guess, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it was, he, he just, you could just, he was like, you could just tell that it, when he was doing this song right here, the joy, he felt like, I mean, I could feel his joy mm-hmm. in this song right here. For sure. Yeah, it was, it was a good song. Really nice. To, oh, man, that music. Mm-hmm. Man, that piano. He does he does a hell of thing with that piano, man, and all his songs, man. That, whoever, what's his piano player's name? Uh, I'm not sure who his piano player's name is, but 
it might be uh I always see this guy's name um Ron Gilmore. You think that might be him? I think actually that is him. Keyboardist. He's a keyboardist, producer, and composer. So yeah, I would say probably that's probably the guy on the keys Mm -hmm. because he's on like a bunch of J Cole stuff. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna assume I'm gonna assume that. All right, cool. So we will go ahead and get into the last track. This is titled "For Your Eyes Only." That is the title of the album and the title of this last track. All right. So this is going to tie everything together. And uh, the story that he tells on this track is just absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, yeah, so this is produced by Elite, uh, Black, J. Cole, and Childish Major. And, yeah, here we go. For your eyes only. Hmm. Yeah. For your eyes only. For your eyes only. For your eyes only. For your eyes. I think that's a coronet. For your eyes only. Mm-hmm. Hey, niggas be dying on the daily. It seems my dreams faded for far too long. The consequences deadly. Can't visualize myself as nothing but a criminal. Control the black, serving up rocks and stay subliminal. Cause young niggas is hard headed, they letting off. Full of adrenaline, ignorant to what death can cause. Ain't no coming back, family dressed in black Plus it's hot now, the cops outside It's hard to flip a pack And my daughter gotta eat Her mama be stressing me like I ain't the one Who put them J's on her feet Mm -hmm. Like I ain't out in the field like that I might be low for the moment But I will bounce back Should get too much for me to take And I break, play the tape for my daughter And let her know my life is on it Let her know my life is on it Mm -hmm. For your eyes eyes only For your eyes, do you understand? For your eyes, do you understand me? For your eyes, do you understand? For your eyes, do you understand me? For your eyes, do you understand? For your eyes, do you understand me? For your eyes, do you understand? For your eyes, you probably grown now, so this song will hit you. If you're hearing this, unfortunately, means that I'm no longer with you. In the physical, not even sure if I believe in God, but because you still alive, it got me praying that the spiritual is real, so I can be a part of you still. My pops was ca- for your eyes, do you understand? For your eyes, do you understand me? For your eyes, it's like do this guy you knew his death was coming. For yeah. Your eyes, do you understand? Yeah. For your like he thought his past was gonna catch up to him. For your eyes. In several ways, I could have went out. Too many to count. Was it the trigger happy crackers that the badges give clout? Was it the young niggas blasting frustrated cause the cash running out? Niggas don't know how to act in a drought. See baby girl I realized my definition of a real nigga was skewed. My views misshaped by new mixtapes that... called me told me he had a funny feeling what he been dealing with lately he wasn't telling i tried to pick his brain still he wasn't revealing but i could feel the sense of panic in his voice and it was chilling he said jermaine i knew you since we was cheering i never asked for nothing when times was hard i never had discussions with you begging you to help me i dealt with the repercussions uh, affected by the mass incarceration in this nation that sent your pops to prison when he needed education sometimes i think this segregation would have done us better Although I know that means that I would never be brought into this world Cause my daddy was so thrilled when he found him a white girl To take back to Jonesboro with Lil Zack and Cole Rare Barely one years old, now it's 30 years later making sure the story's told Girl, your daddy was a real nigga, not cause he was cold Not because he was the first to get some pussy 12 years old Not because he used to come through in the caddy on some Vogue's Not because he went from bagging up them grams to some 
right, so that is track number 10, For Your Eyes Only, the concluding track of the album. What'd you think of that, Dad? Man, that's probably one of the best conclusions of an album I ever heard. You know what I mean? It was just like, it was packed with so information, so much information now because it all brought everything to surface, the whole story about this young lady's dad and how he lived. And he gave it to her, like, you know, he gave it to her straight mm-hmm. with all the dirt he did. Apparently, he must have did something. He knew. he Because he, the thing about it, when you live a life like that, a lot of the things that you do along the way, a lot of those little things always are coming back at you. It's just how you bat it away or how you deal with it when it's coming back. But sometimes you get so deep or you done got so caught up or you done did something that you can't outrun it. And mm-hmm. eventually it's going to overtake you and it's going to somebody, you know, you know, you're going to end up dead. Mm-hmm. And this is where I think, uh, this is what I think happened to him. Yeah. He did something. He knew it, man. Cause he wouldn't even tell Jay, uh, all the detail. Right. He just know that he did some stuff that he can't outrun. He ain't gonna, he, he's not going to be able to outrun it and he's going to die. Mm-hmm. You know, he's talking about premonition. Nah, there wasn't no premonition. You knew this was coming. This was inevitable. Mm-hmm. This is what's, what's going to happen. And it did. Yeah. <clears throat> but it was just a good story about everything the dad did, though. He always was focused on his little girl. Yeah. He did all the things, and you know, he wanted to protect her. He wanted to love her. He wanted all the things that a parent wants to do for their children. He was doing it. He was putting it in the dirty way. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he was going to make sure regardless, she was, she was taken, taken care, care of. of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's real talk. And that's why he said he's a real nigga. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he was down for his. Yeah. Yeah. That was mad. That, that song always gives me chills when I listen to yeah. it. Yeah. It's just like. Man, and um, just I guess for his dad to you know come to J Cole and tell him, please tell my story, mm-hmm. you know, and don't scratch it, don't look. yeah, yeah. And then for J Cole Make to carry it out as an album and release it, yeah, like, that was just so personal. That's the be- that's the best way to get that story out there, right? Though. You know what I mean, right? Put it on, put it on a J Cole album, mm-hmm. Shh. Man. yeah. <laughs> Everybody know now. Yeah, I think just uh, this album, I love it because it's just so deeply personal and just mm-hmm. uh, very vulnerable and uh, just full of that that playlist, <laughs> full of that love that that uh, this guy had for his daughter. And I think it also kind of paralleled J Cole's life because you know he was a new father at the time too. So right, right. He kind of tied that in and wasn't he on the album cover or something? Um, was that him? That was Kendrick. Oh, yeah, that was Kendrick. With the, yeah, Holding okay. his daughter. Right, With right. his wife in the back. Yeah, right, no, that's right. Kendrick. Uh, oh, I guess uh, you should look at the album cover here. J. Cole. Where are you at, buddy? What do you think of the album cover here? Just describe what you see and what it looks like. He's looking down the street. He's on the block. Some kids are looking up to him. Well, one kid is. For your eyes only. I'm not sure what he's trying to say, but he's got his back turned, and that means that's his meaning to it. It's like you. Maybe you're turning your back because you don't want somebody to see something. You mm-hmm. just want that person. You're blocking out just so that that person can see it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe and when it says for your eyes only. Yeah. Like, here, here, I got to show you something. But you turn your back so everybody else oh, can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. can't see it. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I like uh, that interpretation. Yeah. So, but that's a neat album cover. Yeah. It's none of that crazy stuff like my boy. Uh, what's the one that wear all the more crazy costumes? <laughs> oh, Young Thug. <laughs> <laughs> Drop Young Thug, free slime. Drop free slime in the chat if you want us to listen to some Young Thug. Young Thug is like the <laughs> Dennis Rodman of rappers. <laughs> facts, facts. Uh, all yeah, right, it's, cool. it's good. This was, it was gratifying, man. I'm looking for it now. I was looking for it to put on my playlist. I, it's definitely going on here. I'm playing this tonight before I go to bed. 
Yeah, that's a good one. Well, hey, guys, if you enjoyed this album and you enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Also, drop a comment. Let us know what we should react to next. And uh, turn on your post notifications to make sure you're notified every single time we drop a new video. If you like our videos but you want to see the uncut, unedited versions of them, then go ahead and subscribe to our Patreon. The link is in the description. That's all I got for you guys today. We'll see you next time. Bye.